two, three, one. Here we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is drop in just a basic primitive object. I like using the platonic objects. They're my friend. So we're just going to back this guy up. We're, I'm just going to create a very simple animation uh, using the auto keyframes. And uh, I'm going to bring this guy back to zero. And then I'm also going to rotate him around a little bit. Let's say uh, maybe neg like 360. How about that? 360. And then we'll just uh, take him off the screen like this. All right, so here's our basic animation. Okay, we got this guy rotates around and then he goes off the screen. Okay, now one thing that's important about many of you are dealing with multiple objects that are going to be um, that are going to be animated, and sometimes what you want to do is just simply copy and paste the movement of an object. Now, when you have an animation in an object and you take that object, let's just uh, copy this thing and paste it. It's going to um, copy and paste the keyframes as well. Okay, and this can be really important. Let's just name these guys so we know which one is which. Uh, for some of your renderings, this might be really, really important to deal with. So for example, if I wanted to create an assembly line of all these cogs kind of going through doing the same sort of thing, I could just simply uh, create an animation, cut and paste it into the scene, and it will mimic that. So one thing that you can do is if I extend my timeline by 90 frames, I make this 180 instead, uh, that will extend my, my timeline. If I go up to the window and down to the timeline, I can start to make some of these adjustments as we go. So for example, if I grab, um, well first of all, the timeline, you notice the way the timeline is laid out here. What you want to be able to view to begin with is just this keyframes. So you have keyframes, you have the F curves, and then you have the uh, motion bars that you can choose from. The keyframes shows you all of the keys that you've laid out along the timeline. And you can navigate it similar to how we navigate in the viewports. So you can zoom out. If you want to see the entire thing, you can move left and right in the timeline to be able to see further. Um, so what we want to do here is I just want to take one of those objects, platonic number two. When you, when you click on it, it'll select all your keyframes. And you can literally grab it from up above and move it over. Okay, so what this is going to do is, let's watch how this is uh, previewed now, if I just drag this down. So now we see our two objects sort of moving. Okay, I've copied and pasted my, my objects in the timeline, but since I've moved them along the timeline, they're starting at different positions and finishing at different times. Okay, so it's a really easy way that you can just sort of take one sort of fluid animation and replicate it on further and further. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, let's say you have an object that you like, the movement, but you don't want that object. All right, let's say I wanted the platonic, I started with the platonic object, but I want a cube instead. And I don't want to have to re-keyframe all of those things together. Um, so what you can do here is you can literally cut and paste the keyframes to a new object. All right. So in this case, what we would do is just simply drop in a new object. So I'm just going to bring in a cube. All right. And uh, some really dramatic music to help us out here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to make this uh, an extra 90 keyframes. So I'll make this 270 for our total project. And what we can see here is when you have uh, an object that's keyframed, if you open it up, there should be uh, folders that designate the, the individual keyframes for the position, the rotation. And if you do change the scale, there will also be one that deals with scale. Okay? Now, the cube doesn't have any of those folders yet because it doesn't have any keyframes. All right, so when we open that up, we can see no keyframes, no folders. So what we can do is we can take the, the two folders from this platonic number two, and we can just shift and click them both so they're both selected. And then what I'm going to do is control click and drag those into the cube. All right? And what happens is, is those get copied and pasted onto that object. And now the cube has the exact same keyframes and rotation as that original object does. All right? Now, if we were to play this out, we won't see it because the cube is a little larger than the platonic object. So it's just going to be covering it up. But we can see already that the cube is going to do the same thing the platonic object did. 
uh, just sort of it's it's in the same place. So what I'm going to do with the cube now is I'm going to take those keyframes that I just made, and again I'm just going to let's see zoom out a little bit on my timeline so I can see better, and I'm just going to drag this over to the end. So now I have those three positions. Now each one of them does its own little action. All right, I have the first one. I have the second one, and then the third one in which I copied and pasted the keyframes onto that object. All right. So this is a really great way that you can just really use the, the, the timeline to speed up your animations, to add keyframes to objects that are already existing, and follow them through. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how to use the F-curves. Because sometimes you start an animation, let's say if, just like these cubes and, and platonic objects, you have something started, but you want to alter it a little bit. But instead of going back and reconfiguring the individual keyframes and uh, moving objects around, you can play around with the F curves, and I really encourage doing that. So the way that this works is, let's just start with the first platonic object. You can just click on the F curves, and you might need to zoom out a little bit so you can see this better. Uh, but just have the platonic object selected. We're going to choose individual ones first, so I'll just choose the uh, position. And the position, you can see that we have this big blue curve for the position of, the, um, of that first object. And if I go back to my original line here, if we just watch the first object play out through, we can see, you know, watch, the, you can see the, the timeline sort of following that curve, that individual curve. All right, and it has a motion where it kind of starts and starts uh, slow, gets fast, and ends slow. We can change that if we play around with these F curves as well. So let's just move this over here so we can kind of see that on screen. Yeah, okay. So um, if we play this out, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, we can change this F curve. Now let's say we wanted it to, um, oops, sorry. I just want the position. There we go. So we can select individual, uh, like for example, I can select this and I can change its curvature, right? I can move it just like one of those Bezier curves. Or I can um, grab the center and I can change this position according to what um, the, the rotation is. So this becomes really important in how we describe the overall object. So if I take this keyframe and I, and I stretch it out, if I change the curvature of it, it's going to change the, uh, the rotation uh, of that original object. So if we play it out again, now it's going to start out slow, it's going to go fast, it's going to start out slow, slow down, and then go fast at the end because it sort of changes that curve. And there's a lot of different ways that you can play with those individual curves to sort of change them around. So if I make this, if I take this one up here and I really stretch it out like this and uh, play this out again, let's go back to the beginning. If we play this now, you can see that it's going to start out really slow. And then it's going to speed up towards the end. All right? So it sort of changes its configuration. Um, if I take this in the middle and I bend the curves down in opposite directions, like this, if I really change the motion curve, we're going to see that it's going to start out. <coughs> let's watch that again. It's going to start out. It's going to go backwards a little bit. And then it's going to go fast again. So we're totally changing the, the way that the animation is being read by just simply playing around with the curvature of those different qualities. So we can really, you know, alter the overall composition of the movement by playing with those F curves. It goes fast, comes back slow, and ends slow in those sort of ways. All right? So if you want to, um, you know, I suggest experimenting a little bit. Play around.